Hello everyone, welcome back to the Duchess of Unicorn YouTube channel and this is where we surf on a surfboard the internet looking for anything that pertains to the British royals and especially as it pertains to Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. So I guess I guess there's a little bit of news coming out right now um, in terms of Meghan and Harry, um, but most of it is laughable. Uh, a lot of it is is truly laughable since it has to do with pursuing voiceover work and acting gigs. And that could be just a PR stunt to have us look over here, you know, to the to the left when we should be looking to the right or mid down the center, whichever. But what we're seeing is a lot of kind of silly, it's almost to keep Megan in the media and to keep that kind of going. Because again, really, I mean, it's that, you know, is a t pertain to Megan because we all know Megan loves to be, you know, s you know, given attention. And Prince Harry, maybe he does. I don't know. Maybe it's inbred in him since he's you know, been born into royalty that, you know, he comes along with the media, but yet he stepped out of the limelight of the media due to all the, you know, negative press, if you will, in terms of his wife and, you know, his own judgment calls, you know, flying on several planes to several places at various times, which is interesting because now you don't hear as much about them flying to and fro anywhere. And as a matter of fact, when we look back at that time, we see that she went and, and Prince Harry went to Nice to visit Sir Elton John and we're thinking, why? Why did you visit Sir Elton John when really he doesn't have anything to do with you? However, because let's face it, Megan had never met Sir Elton John in her entire life and she probably never would if it wasn't for marrying Prince Harry. And we all know that how she bagged Prince Harry was definitely either a spell, you know, a Hollywood witch spell that maybe somebody helped her incantate, you know, incarnate. And, uh, you know, she used other charms and fakeness, basically. And Harry being pretty much open to finding somebody different and new that could could really spark something in him doing something totally crazy like being a, a white royal with Nazi history marrying a biracial American divorcee black or just biracial woman so that maybe that was just the spark and the craziness of it and he really didn't think it was going to get that far but when it did it was like okay maybe this is fate maybe this is destiny okay i'll play along because you have to think like um you have to think in terms of megan and harry and a lot of this um whirlwind quote-unquote romance is that you really have to think like a royal and get yourself in harry's mindset you know he could really be ending up with any woman that he chose to if the right woman was there for him. And he was really, you know, mixing a, among more elite type women. And Megan, having been, you know, put into his pathway by some kind of fixer upper type of thing, like someone saying, okay, you know, I'll do this for you. He's going to be here. You know, somebody wanted this to happen. And it makes you think that it was somebody further up in the chain in terms of status and you know your elite status that could actually see this come to fruition. So it's not like Megan just went somewhere at the right time at the wrong time and you know Prince Harry was there. It was more like she was you know scoping out the joint, scoping and casing out the situation and the people and putting herself on the board as a player. In other words, I'm going to try to get my friends or people of acquaintances thereof to um, put me in front of this person, even if it's just one, one or two times. And the first time we know through watching different um, videos, history, reading, articles, media, you know that she was put together by somebody else 
this friend. It's been Misha Nunu, whatever, but we don't really know because we haven't got a confirmation on that. It could have been Marcus Anderson who, you know, he runs Soho House and Soho House has a lot of access to a lot of people and perhaps he had been invited or been introduced to someone in Prince Harry's camp. And that's how it all kind of fell into place over time. So him being single and Megan being single, her career running its course right into a brick wall, she ended up meeting him at just the nick of time. Okay. So when we think about these things, you know, now we go back to the present day, we see that she's, you know, opted out of the royal family because she couldn't hack it. I have other theories in that, and I don't know how deep I want to get into them here, but, you know, Megan was running in, in Hollywood. She was running in the outer circles. She wasn't running in the inner circles. Like she wasn't hobnobbing with Beyonce and black elite um, Hollywood stars, Denzel Washington. And she wasn't even in their atmosphere, really. She was nowhere in their space. She was in the outside circle where the lightweight actors and actresses are. They're still actors and actresses, but they're on the outer rim. So they're on the lower echelon, you know, the, 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 Kind of like the outer circle. Think of a circle and think of several rings, like a target, a bull, you know, bullseyes in the middle and it's circular and there's all these round rings. Well, Megan was somewhere on the outer rings, maybe not the out of the ring because that would be like you and me. But let's say she was in like inside the circle in the first red, you know, uh, circular ring. So she wasn't quite anywhere in the vicinity of everybody else who was near the bullseye or just outside of the bullseye. So in, in terms of actors, she was nowhere near hobnobbing with any of these people and could not get introduced to these type of people because they couldn't be so bothered. Because if you get into the mindset of a Hollywood actress, especially one that didn't make it all the way um, where she really had hoped she'd be, and she talks about this in many um, articles. Uh, and if I have the link, if I care to put it in there, I will. But you can see in some of her interviews, she says, you know, it was very hard and it's an ever grinding thing. And, you know, she it, she doesn't say that verbatim, but what she says is about her struggles. And so it was a struggle even to get where she was. And she had to work very hard and I'm sure other things to get to that point. And basically in her 40s, and I know they said that she's in her 30s, but even in her late 30s, early 40s, um, she probably wasn't going to go any further if she hadn't made it then, because in Hollywood, everything is youth. And so now we have her married in. She did that. She was able to pull that off. And two years, she couldn't pull it all off because she couldn't even last four or five years. What she did is she could only do what she could do. Now I have theories about that and they crisscross on conspiracy theories, meaning that she saw and witnessed and heard a lot of things that don't vibe with her, that she could be frightened of, or that she could be um, not imagining that that would be her in her lifetime in that kind of vicinity. But if we look at anything, we see that Megan from before Harry and then just meeting Harry and kind of getting engaged with him. And then till now, she seems, even her personality seems a lot different. Her demeanor seems different. Her behaviors seem different. And when we think about that, and we look at those photos, and hopefully I can put a few up, we look and see that she has matured in a way that is also very bitter. It is kind of still the phony applied smile. And if I can smile, I can smile, smile. She thinks she can get everything through just smiling. But honestly, people are, are bored with that and people can see through that. A lot of people can. And so I think she crossed the point where she couldn't just keep smirking and smiling and saying, oh, you're so nice and sing songing every word until people started saying, shut the fuck up. And so that was just for a lack of better words. I just want to throw that in there. But people were like, you need to just be quiet now. We see you. And I think that that 
and maybe some other things in the background, like, you know, there's things around, you know, all around about the royal family being very corrupt and uh, satanic rituals and um, all type of things. Even in Hollywood, there is that. And so maybe Megan had finally made it to that point where it seems like it's not acting anymore, that it is actually legitimate. So if Megan ever participated in her lifetime, which you don't see anything about that written on her except for things that have to do with, uh, how do I say, like, um, like being a yacht girl, like, so an escort type of girl, someone that's paid to go on a yacht, pretty girl to pay to go on a yacht with older men or businessmen and just there to be eye candy and do whatever. And I'm sure there's a certain amount of things that you do do to get by. And I don't care what anybody says. If you're in that situation, there's a couple of things that can happen. A lot of pressure from, from your peers. Maybe other yacht girls were like, well, if you don't do it, I will. Or maybe the businessman or the executive is saying, hey, you're on this yacht. You're here to do this, that, and that. You know, I'll give you another $15,000 to do X, Y, Z. And maybe come um, come and, you know, ashore with me and we'll have a, a whole day of it, you know, going out, dinner, dancing, all that other stuff, being, you know, escorted with him or him and she escorting him. So I'm not saying that I know that. I'm saying that we're basing that on being a yacht girl. In acting, there's the casting couch, you know, Megan, maybe she, for all we know, that has been part of the gig. We never know, but maybe prior she didn't want to succumb to that. I don't really know those things about Megan. Those are my opinions and ideas. And it's well documented in, in the Me Too movement and how women and women empowerment is that. And Megan was big on that women empowerment thing for a long time. Like she was shoving that down everybody's face. I'm feminist. But really, how feminist are you if you married into the royal family and you are, you know, fighting with your husband to be ahead because you think that you deserve that. Whereas marrying a prince, you're marrying into a monarchy where it's a royal family where you knew where you stood, but yet you try to overstep those boundaries. And that's a thousands of year institution that Megan thought she was so powerful she could bring it down. Now, I'm also thinking that there's a lot of conspiracy in the background that Megan may have some goods on the family. I, come on, admit it. You marry into someone's family, you date someone's family, and you date someone you really like, and you find out there's a whole thing behind that family, a whole happening. And wow, it's definitely worthy of writing it down and throwing it in a safe deposit box or a safe or what have you, or putting on a disk drive and having it put in a safe deposit box, not just a regular diary, because let's face it, a diary today a lot of times is an app or electronics or a whole entire phone dedicated to that or a tablet. So when they have stories about Megan having a diary or a journal and it's writing in it, I'm thinking, well, who, who really writes anymore pen to, pen to paper? So some people do, but wouldn't you think that Megan, knowing when the platform that she's on and knowing where she's at and the kind of power that's around her, wouldn't you have a more secure method of, say, writing a diary? So I think there's a lot more that meets the eye when, when we see Megan and we see her back in the, you know, back in the States or in Canada, you know, maybe she's hiding in Canada because that property is kind of obscure and it's kind of, uh, Canada has better privacy laws and rights. Um, and she's using that as a cover, but eventually she has to come out of there. There's two reasons. You have this child supposedly that eventually grows up. That baby does not stay not walking and not talking forever. And it's going to be harder to conceal him in terms of you being in the public eye. So that makes me think that's another reason why they got the hell out of the public eye because that needs to be escaped because either the real child is, you know, in jeopardy of being seen or the, or the actor child is being in jeopardy of being found out. And basically it's only a matter of time, right? So there's that conspiracy theory. Um, and the fact that you know, Megan maybe really did have a contract is my other thing. And so when we see her today, we see her kind of slowly stepping out from under whatever she had going with 
royalty. Now, the thing with royalty is she's married into, it's like being a doctor. Once you're not a doctor anymore, what do you do? Become a investment, you know, a stockbroker? Do you become uh, a, philanth a philanthropist? What do you become when you, you know, doctors, like say you went all your life to be educated to be a doctor. Well, where do you go from there? You don't become a store clerk. So for Megan to do the things she did and to be manipulative as she had been to become Prince Harry's wife. Okay. Where do you go from there? Back to acting. And so I'm seeing a lot of superficial stuff today that kind of tries to even out, you know, the whole thing with Megan, like, oh, you know, here we are, we're in Canada right now, but, but guess what? Here's some things I think is going to go on. Megan is in supposedly in Canada, but now we're hearing that they're going to be building a house in the UK for $3 million. And um, why would you want to go back to the UK if you hate the, the, your, the uh, British people? Like you hate England, you hate Britain in general, you just hate it. It's not, you know, you're a California girl, let's admit it. Let's admit it. You're all sunshine and fruit and avocados and flip-flops. You have tons of interviews saying how Californian, California girl you really are. But you are now talking about buying a $3 million home I'm sorry, building a $3 million home on the property of the Soho house in the United Kingdom. So you went from being in the United Kingdom to begging to get out of the United Kingdom and get away from being a royal. Now you want to go back and kind of get that money from the Duchy of Cornwall, which that should be cut off to them for good, especially since Prince Harry is no longer a royal. He He's no longer a working royal. So why does he need a paycheck from Prince Charles? I have no idea. So now you want to go back to the UK and then you want to act like you're going to become back, come back to America to be an actress again. Well, we don't want you here. We keep saying that. I hear that often. If you go on the Sussex Royal page, you can see so many, um, I'll call them constructive criticism or criticism in terms of Megan. It's mostly Megan. But a little bit is Harry, like, oh, you both are, you know, living off of us, you know, being the UK people. And you hear that type of thing. But mainly people are sick and tired of the bullshit. And then you make this big ruckus to be out of the, you know, out of the media. And then we got articles like this online from Yahoo.com and it's Yahoo Lifestyle. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry make a guest appearance on this hugely popular sitcom. I don't know. I don't even know how it's hugely popular. I haven't seen The Simpsons since, I mean, maybe 20 years. Uh, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry could be making a very interesting TV appearance soon, not just in the way you might be imagining. The Simpsons is reportedly, reportedly looking for the royal couple to tackle over voiceover roles as special guests on the long-running animated sitcom. But why, God? Why? I have no idea. Shh, we don't even know. Nobody knows why they would even want to... A prince. Megan, keep dragging Prince Harry through the mud. We've talked about Harry and Meghan, the Simpson producer, Al Jean, uh, told UK Publication Radio Times, as The Sun reported, I hear, let's see, I hear she wants to do voiceover work. So if they're reading this, give us a call. Ever since Meghan and Harry began pursuing new lives as a part of their royal exit, which officially begins on March 31st, it's coming so fast. They've been ready to create their own lives with a potential Los Angeles home base situation in the works. This is what Megan and Harry have always wanted to create their own life. And I want to stop there because the article is not important really in the sense of this video, but I want to stop there because it's the same old rhetoric. So think about it. Prince Harry a prince, a royal prince. So here's my thoughts. Just because you're royal doesn't mean that you have to assume all the obnoxious, um, better than, um, 
you know, elitist attitude. However, it is really and truly and honestly way too low for Prince Harry to be acting in a sitcom voiceover. It's it's so minuscule, but it's so petty beneath him. When you think of Prince Harry acting, I really don't want to see Prince Harry acting as a prince or acting as anything, really. Maybe a documentary that has to do with the world or something that's real um, and substantial. Yes, that I could see. But I cannot see Prince Harry as is using his voice as The Simpsons. And Megan, yeah, maybe we can. Nobody really cares. And here's the last thing I want to say. I think when Megan said she wanted to do voiceover work, I think what she had hoped and what she desires so deeply is to be more like, say, Beyonce and how she is a performer and a singer and entertainer, but yet she is in acting roles in legitimate movies. And she has done Lion King as voiceover work. I think she's emulating these truly talented stars, these truly talented celebrities that she emulates, that she feels even a little bit envious of because all she's ever gotten was suits. And now maybe she can, if she's lucky, and that's the big luck of being a a royal is she was offered something for the Simpsons. All right, everybody. I think I blabbed enough today. I hope you're having wellness and safety and love in your life right now. And I will see you in the next video, which I should be posting up another video. It may not be heavy. It may not be like super deep, but I'll tell you what, we're going to talk a lot about what I think is happening. And that reminds me, don't forget, check out the disclaimer in the description box. It's always there. It's like my rock and it keeps me, you know, grounded. And you know, and I know, I surf the internet and these are all my own opinions. And so, you know, I don't expect you to agree with me. Um, Maybe you get a point that I'm trying to get at, or maybe this is just a silly video where I can just laugh at Megan being voiceover for The Simpsons, which I'm laughing inside hysterically. If it wasn't for this whole pandemic thing, I'd be laughing like crazy. But inside I'm laughing. I I think that she wanted something like Disney-ish, like for her to be like something like Mulan, the voice of Mulan, or be someone, you know, deep in Lion King. She's pathetic. What she really had aimed for, even as she tried to trick her way into the royal into a royal seat and a position, she still only gets offered a role in a animated cartoon as voiceover work. I think she was aiming for a lot more. So it's pretty sad. I think if she has any couth, she'd think that was a little bit insultive. But that's what happens when you have no talent. You try to trick your way into a position within a very royal, powerful family, the firm, and then you rip yourself out of it and take one of their people with them only to find yourself offered a low, low, low position. I mean, they're not going to give her $2 million to, to lend her voice. She's not worth that. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.